to downtown Minneapolis for the Seattle Seahawks and the Minnesota Vikings as Russell Wilson brings the Seahawks to town looking to bounce back from a tough loss last week. The Minnesota Vikings looking for win number one on the season. We welcome you inside the booth alongside former NFL quarterback Mark Sanchez. I'm Kevin Kugler. Minnesota trying to bounce back. They're 0-2 to start the season. First game at home, but they're looking for that first win without Dalvin Cook. And that leaves them in a huge hole. They're going to need two guys to help carry the load. Look for number 25, Alexander Madison, number one. Listen, he's their big back. He's done it before against the Seattle defense last year. Went for over 100 yards on the ground. And then Amir Abdullah, number 31. He's your classic scat back. He's the guy you want in two-minute situations to match up with the linebacker, wiggle free, and give Kirk Cousins an outlet both of these teams coming off crushing losses last week for Seattle gave up a double-digit lead in the loss to Tennessee but Russell Wilson is off to a tremendous start to this 2021 season him and coach Carroll acknowledge way too sloppy giving up that 14-point lead lead at home last week in Seattle Russell said we got juice we got energy and he's coming in with six touchdown passes and most importantly a goose egg in the interception column he takes care of it just like the best of them in the league and what he does so well is extend plays especially to his left pierces the defense down the field and gives them those splash plays that we know and love should be a fun one today as we go for more pregame festivities to public address announcer Alan Roach Football Hall of Famer Randall McDaniel, one of the best offensive linemen in the history of the game back in Minnesota. To get this one started, home opener, first time fans have been in the building since 2019. They're fired up. They won the toss in the Vikings, and they'll defer. Seattle will have the football first as DJ Dallas will extend his arms. This one a touchback. And out comes the Seattle offense. But before that, come to welcome in the third member of our crew, Laura Oakley. on first down with the play fake chased by Hunter on the run finds DK Metcalf and he's got a first down to the 43 yard line Harrison Smith on the stop and we talked about it at the top of the broadcast Russell Wilson's numbers this year Mark they are spectacular best in the NFL six touchdowns no interceptions looking for win number 100 in his career today and I love what Shane Waldron their offensive coordinator just did right there get him an easy completion in an adverse environment in a tough situation just give me a one for one and Russell executed very well right, he's swaying the motion man for Seattle on first down here's Carson digs up forward to the 44 yard line just a couple for Chris Carson and this Seattle offense a little bit of a change up front Brandon Shell out this week with an ankle injury so Jamarco Jones moves over to the right tackle spot for Seattle we'll see how he fares along that line and they tremendous group of receivers led by DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett on second down it's Carson picks his way over the right side and then backs into Vikings territory a yard shy of a Seattle first down Dalvin Tomlinson who's name you'll likely hear a lot today along with Daniel Hunter who had three sacks a week ago dominant up front Eric Kendricks the heartbeat of this defense and the secondary with the veteran Patrick Peterson 
Adams side under head coach Mike Zimmer. Patrick Peterson and Xavier Woods, they're, they're two veterans, and Harrison Smith, three veterans, that have their work cut out for them with Lockett and Metcalf. Third and one. Carson looking for the edge. He's got the edge. He's got the first down. Smith on the tackle, running behind Dwayne Brown to get that first down. And look how patient he is. He's just going to bounce, keep bouncing, keep bouncing all the way out to the sideline on this. Continue to follow his blockers and stay patient. Keep dipping up and then bouncing out. Excellent job by Chris Carson there. Understanding the sticks and getting to him. First down at the Minnesota 45. Play action. Wilson with the pocket collapsing. Checks down to Carson. Met one on one by Nick Vigil. He's playing more for Anthony Barr, Mark, who's injured, and Vigil's played well. Vigil's played excellent. I love what Russell Wilson did right there, though. He goes with a deep play fake. He gets Kendricks for just a heartbeat, but not enough. They wanted to get Swain down the middle into this cover two defense. We'll look at that as we move on. But they're going to have two high safeties this entire time. That's a Mike Zimmer staple. They got to attack the middle of the field and really use those play fakes to suck up the linebackers. Stack two receivers to either side of the line. In the backfield is Alex Collins for the first time. Russ making an adjustment. He's feeling pressure on his left-hand side down here at the bottom of the screen. It's Collins with the carry. And it was McKenzie Alexander on the nickel pressure. That's why Russell wanted to run away from that thing. comes off the edge they got no answer because there's no tight end out there Russell knows I got to run away from it and the best thing he can do right there is just get the ball going the opposite direction away from a pressure that's going to be unblocked and blow that thing up in the backfield third and two in Minnesota another staple there goes the double mugs right up front in that a gap making it tough on this O-line Vikings rush four Wilson fires Metcalf open over the middle and what a move Metcalf Inside the 10, first and goal, Seattle. And watch Metcalf get crafty inside here. And he's going to have to be crafty because he's working against Patrick Peterson. He slams on the brakes, leaves Peterson in the dust, and makes his makes himself known and gives his hands to Russell Wilson saying, hey, man, I'm going to park it right here. Put it on me. Excellent job of understanding spacing in a zone defense like that, getting rid of his guy and finding a hole. Seattle loves to run the ball when they get into the red zone 64% of the time. It's fourth most in the National Football League. First and goal from the 10. Wilson in trouble, and he'll throw this one away. Just a smart play by the Heat. Just a smart play. They figured out. Listen, they're going to have DK one on one right here. Him and Patrick Peterson. But Patrick Peterson, he ain't biting on any moves. He's not worried about much. He's all over him. Like a glove, man. He gloved him up pretty good there. And Russ knew, hey, this isn't our kind of play. Let's just move on. Give me second and ten. Let's live to fight another day. So Metcalf will trot out to the top side to Russell Wilson's right as he looks over this Vikings defense on second and goal. Wilson looking for Metcalf, throws it short, makes the catch, leaning for the pylon, he's in, it's a touchdown! DK Metcalf, the star of the opening drive for Seattle, as he puts it in from 10 yards out. And look at all this space they're giving DK Metcalf out here on the edge. Boom, he just breaks off this quick route, way too much space in there. No excuse for that, you gotta be up and on that guy. The only thing they're worried about too is the reason for giving him that kind of space is, hey, look, this guy can go over the top. He can he can catch a jump ball with any of us. Let's be smart. Maybe give us a little cushion here. And the Seahawks and Shane Waldron use that to their advantage. Give him a quick out route, quick little Omaha route, OT route. What a start for Seattle. Mike Zimmer's defense on its heels in that opening drive. As Jason Myers lines up for the extra point. Myers' kick is good. 7-0 Seattle. Great start on the road as DK Metcalf has his second touchdown of the season.
this space they're giving DK Metcalf with Rashad Breeland, number 21 for the Vikings. The reason they're doing it is they don't want to get beat over the top on the fade ball. But you see Rashad Breeland on the sidelines after he said, hey, man, what do you want me to do? If this guy's going to, if we're going to give him all this kind of room to work, I can't run up and make a tackle. He's too big. He's too physical. He's going to beat me to the pylon. If I'm the defensive coordinator here, I'd at least make them throw that perfect ball into the trash can, into the back corner, into the back pylon, and make it tough. Make Russell Wilson throw a perfect ball, not give him a free completion on the outside. Three catches for 54 yards for Metcalf on the opening drive, and now the answer trying to be provided by Kirk Cousins. We talked about the start Russell Wilson's had of the year. How about the numbers for Kirk Cousins, albeit in two losing efforts? The most underrated quarterback in the league by far. He's not your flashy guy, right? Right? He's, he's more your analog guy, not digital guy. He's old school record player kind of guy. He's not going to have that presence on social media and all that kind of stuff. There's no flash. There's no flair. But what he does is he can execute, man. This guy's a cold-blooded executioner. And I love his game. Let's see if he can get these guys out to a great start. Minnesota will have the five-yard penalty added to the end of the play. First down. Penalty added to the end of the play, so the Vikings are going to start from the 30-yard line instead of the 25 yards on so five yards extra to work with how much more pressure is on Kirk Cousins today without their star running back Dalvin Cook back oh that's huge and we mentioned it in the opener Dalvin Cook he's the heartbeat of this defense now it puts a ton of pressure on their running back Alexander Madison number 25 he's the back in the eye with and the fullback and on first down a little toss to Madison good cutback and good yardage on first down as Madison's down at the 37-yard line. Downstairs we go to Laura Oakman. I have an update on Dalvin Cook on that heartbeat. Normally this is the part where I'd say they worked him out in the morning. Athletic traders ruled him out, but it didn't get that far this morning. I talked to Mike Zimmer. He said that he woke up, didn't feel right, so they ruled him out at the hotel. I asked about next week, and, and Zimmer just said we're hopeful. Well, we were at practice on Friday, Mark, and we didn't see Dalvin Cook do much of anything, so it did, didn't come as a huge surprise that he was inactive today. Second and three, they'll set up the screen to Madison. Blockers in front, first down and more into Seattle territory, and he's pinned down at the 43-yard line by Jamal Adams, a 20-yard screen. And these screens really slow down a pass rush, and they want to get that established early. They want to establish the run game, get these screen guys in phase, and watch Madison just take his time getting out of the backfield and then follow the big hog mollies down the field. And those guys, great job of understanding the point of emphasis from the NFL this year. They can't go cut those guys out on the edge. They got to stay up, stay on their feet. Great execution by the Vikings. Amir Abdullah in the game for the first time. Osborne in motion. Cousins, a little bootleg, throws on the run and wide open is Tyler Conklin, the tight end, down to the 25-yard line. Oscar Cousins leave all these rushers in the dust off the edge with the fake. Great ball fake, great eyes. And he left those guys sliding into second base there and got around on the edge. Excellent job keeping his eyes down the field, remaining a passer out on the edge and slowing down Conklin so he didn't run into Trey Flowers right there and get decapitated. Which would be a bad thing. Madison behind the line, the toss to Jefferson on the edge, and Jefferson down at the 18-yard line, 100th career catch for Justin Jefferson. And this is just an extension of the run game. If you're going to give me that much space out there, this is a run called up front, and Kirk Cousins just takes that ball and says, hey, Jefferson, get me a couple yards. This is an extension of our run game. Takes pressure off the run game, off the lineman, and off Alexander Madison. As a quarterback, what's the call to let the wide receiver know, hey, I'm coming to you instead of the run we talked about in the huddle? A lot of those runs have quick tags on them, or they'll have run rules associated with them. Hey, listen, if he's pressed, you got to block him or run him off. Or if he's off, just give me a quick one step now. Second down and two. Cousins to the sideline. Jefferson again. Jefferson dancing inside the 10. And it's first and goal, Minnesota to the eight yard line. Justin Jefferson, five straight games with five catches or more. He's got two on this opening drop. And no surprise, they're giving him all this kind of space out on the edge because they're terrified of his speed over the top. Nobody wants to get beat for a free one over the top. Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins understanding what Pete Carroll's defense is going to give them. All right, fine. I'll take the easy completion to keep moving this thing down the field. Seattle has not allowed an opening drive touchdown in their last 10 games. Second longest streak in the National Football League entering the day. Here's Madison trying to change it. Not much there. On 
first down and goal from the eight. Maybe a yard. Jamal Adams coming up and run support to make the tackle. And that's really been Jamal Adams' M.O. since he's been on this team. He wants to be the eighth guy in the box. He wants to force these runs back inside. He wants to blitz off the edge. That's his game right there. Feels more like a linebacker than a safety. Guy. In some ways, he's replacing K.J. Wright. That's that's his new deal. Second goal at the seven. Madison the single back. Cousins to throw with time to the end zone. Caught and a touchdown. Dropping eight. It's so difficult to get quick completions when a defense is only going to rush three and drop eight. But an excellent job of seeing that throwing lane behind a dropping defensive end and Robert Kikdichi. Well executed by Kirk Cousins. Conklin coming up big. Two catches on that drive. And a game time touchdown pass from Kirk Cousins to Tyler Conklin. Buckle up. What a start to this one in the Twin Cities. And watch Seattle's defense. They're expecting the quick game. They're only going to rush three. They're going to drop everybody else. That's eight more defenders. Watch these guys are going to pop out of here and try and gobble up this quick game. But Kirk Cousins, excellent job of understanding the space inside here and executing this stick route. Tyler Conklin coming back, quarterback friendly at the top, shaving off just like half a yard on the top of that route to give him a throwing lane. Excellent job by Kirk Cousins. Not a ball over 10, 12 yards. A couple balls at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. Well done for him in that opening drive. And the longest play was the screen pass that went 20 yards. So terrific start for both of these teams. Seattle now heads back out onto the field for their second offensive possession. And Pete Carroll watching his offense march down the field in that first possession. 10 years as an NFL coach. Who's hey, that guy? Look at that guy. Man, oh, that's Pete Carroll. He's got a shave. And, of course, Super Bowl champs. 113 64 and one record with Seattle and I know you know now the 70 year old head coach very well having played for him at USC It's so funny. I asked him. I said are you gonna go to your 80? What's the deal? What's the timeline coach? He said I'm on a five-year plan every year. That's just five more years of coaching. <laughs> From the 25 on first down Wilson off the play fake. Lots of time to throw. Pocket now collapsing. Good coverage downfield. Wilson going to try to run. And Russell Wilson will get a couple out to the 27-yard line. So now we, we went to the Pete Carroll timeline. Now it's the Pete Carroll and Mark Sanchez timeline. Hey, so, look at that guy. I mean, handsome. Look how handsome wow. and young you were there. I thought you were talking about Coach. No, 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 I'm talking <laughs> about you. But look, this is right before the game. You guys got the chance to catch up, not only with our meetings yesterday, but in person earlier today. I know you guys had a nice reunion. Long chat on the field, though. Oh, he's, he's one of the best. Not just a, a coach, but a teacher and a motivator, a master motivator. And he has such a great ability. Second and eight. That's Carson. Not going anywhere. Good defense by the Vikings. Brings up a big third down. He has the rare and special ability as a coach, Pete Carroll, that is, to get guys in the right frame of mind. Psychology major, University of Pacific. He knows how to get to these guys, build a bridge, develop chemistry and camaraderie, and get them to trust him. And that's why they play so hard for him. They'll run through a brick wall for him. Oh, and as Laura was talking about in our open, the big motivation for Pete Carroll this week was trying to find the line of getting them too excited, enough excitement. This crowd trying to provide a little bit of excitement of their own on third and seven. Seattle stayed on the field, didn't want him to get a chance to sub. Bring pressure, Wilson throws. Good throw and catch. Freddie Swain with a first down to the 38-yard line, a pickup of 10. And look at Freddie Swain on the outside. He's just going to hit this quick slant route. Does a great job of creating space, getting the inside release, and then beating the defender. But Russell Wilson, he's just deadly in quick game. And all he had to do there was pick a side. He's so decisive when it comes to quick game. He knows, hey, I'm working the right side. I'll play that out till it doesn't work. First down, off 
the play fake with pressure again and Metcalf his fourth catch of the afternoon down the midfield the 12 yard pickup well, let's talk about three's keys to the game oh no doubt when we say decisive and accurate that's in the quick game he knows which way to go and he knows how to get there fast his mental snapshot on play action that's before he turns his back to the defense like he just did he knows exactly where those guys are going to be and then he is so dangerous danger rust that is spinning out to the left nobody better at escaping the pocket to his left as a right-handed quarterback Pete Carroll tributes that to play in second base and turn it two in baseball midfield Carson with an opening and Kendricks drops him as he picks up eight to the 42 on the road three of the next four starting today the road's been very kind to Pete Carroll over the last couple of years Mark 13 and four on the road over the last two years and he preaches that in team meetings early in the season it's all about the football he knows turnovers win and lose games but he also has to get to the number 50 and that's rush attempts and completions those have such a huge impact on these football games in motion on second and two it's Carson again with the cutback and the first down and breaking tackles all the way down to the 34 yard line Laura Oakman Russell Wilson you'll become the best in the game without the mindset to be the best I love this mindset he said someone asked him last year how many days off do you take and he said the real question is how many days am I on I'm 365 it's 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 a lifestyle not an option he said I want to be not just one of the best smartest clutch guys in the world I don't want to be good or great I want to be legendary. I want to be iconic. That was the word. Iconic is a pretty tall order for most of us to come up with. But Russell Wilson embraces the notion of iconic. Mark and I are just hoping to survive day to day. <laughs> and Russell's aiming for iconic. Hey, hey, speak for yourself. I'm sorry. I'm just hoping to survive day to day. <laughs> Second down and nine. And you know what he is? He's a great stopper as well. You hear about it in baseball all the time. Get your ace on the mound. After a loss since 1950, nobody's got a better winning percentage than Russell Wilson. And that's some pretty good company he keeps with Tom Brady and Joe Montana. It's incredible the way he has this ability to bounce back. A lot of that's him and his innate nature, but a lot of that's Coach Carroll as well. Second and nine, throw back to Lockett with blockers. Lockett, nice move, another zigzag cut, and Lockett's got a first down at the 24 of Minnesota working around the Kyle Fuller block. Watch this, they're gonna run him across your screen right here on the fly sweep, and then let him be the screen guy. Boom, fake it to the back, slam on the brakes, get the cavalry out in front of him, and then lock it. Do what you do, buddy. Get inside and get space. There is a flag down right at the 30-yard line. Illegal block in the back, number 41, offense. Second down. So Alex Collins block in the back. Will this Correction, that play is number 61. Oh, the big thing there, you got to get your head on the front side of this defender right there to keep the referee from calling that. Some would say ticky tack, but listen, the refs are looking for that. You got to get your head on the front side of that thing. And if you can't get your head on the right side, you just high screen him, just stand in his way, just like a basketball play. Second down and 16 now after the penalty. Ten flags last week against Seattle as Everett yanked down at the 35-yard line. And a big third down coming up. This Vikings defense has not seen a lot of stops. In fact, Seattle three for three on third so far. This is where you want to get him if you're going to try and get him at third down. You've got to get him to third and long. Make them hold the ball in the backfield. But these guys got to understand. Russell Wilson loves these third and longs because he gets a chance to uh, extend these plays. So when he moves around in this pocket right now, these defenders have to be on high alert to plaster their guy. They got to stay with their guy down the field and expect to cover for six or seven seconds potentially. Rocket and Metcalf to the top of the screen. That's Everett in motion on third down and 11. Wilson rolls to the right. And Wilson going to have to throw this one away. They plastered their defenders downfield just like you said they needed to, Mark. They sure did, and they expected pressure up front at the beginning. They have a play set up for everybody to block backside and let Russ run out to the top of your screen. Just, just 
uh, block off all those defensive linemen, get Russ out on the move. It's a design rollout, but look at all these defenders for the Vikings loving up their three receivers that ended up in the route. 53 yard try for Jason Myers, who has hit 36 straight field goals. Hit one from 61 a year ago, so this is certainly in his range. Myers right down the middle. 37 straight made field goals. The record is 44 from Adam Vinatieri, who was also coached by Pete Carroll. Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins locked up in a good one here in Minneapolis. A 10-7 lead for the visitors from Seattle, scoring on all three possessions combined between the two teams. And Russell Wilson and the brain trust of Seattle trying to figure out ways to put more points on the board as Kirk Cousins gets set to head back out of the field. Amir Smith-Marset, the rookie from Iowa, the deep man, awaiting the kickoff. And Smith-Marset from the one-yard line, trying to find a crease. Gets to the side, a little hop. And Smith-Marset out of bounds across the 25-yard line. Vikings fans, just look away for a moment. Plug your ears, shield your kids' eyes, because the loss is the first two weeks. I know you don't want to relive it, but we are telling the story. So week one, they lose on the 33-yard field goal in overtime to Cincinnati. And then, of course, in Minnesota, comes down to a kick again in Arizona last week. The missed 37-yard field goal from Greg Joseph. That allows the Cardinals to get the 34-33 win. Mike Zimmer had his kickers back after that. He said, lots of kickers miss field goals. Let's give the kid a break. But if you're a Vikings fan, you know that kicking and Vikings woes kind of go hand in hand over the history of this franchise. As Madison down at the 27 in the arms of Bobby Wagner. There's Greg Joseph. His only miss was that kick, the 37-yarder at Arizona. All of his other makes have been from 50 yards or more. See if he gets another chance later on in this one to give the Vikings a win at home. 10-7 after one quarter, Seattle with the lead over the Vikings. Welcome back to the Twin Cities. Minneapolis, St. Paul, wonderful to be in Minnesota alongside Mark Sanchez with Laura Oakman on the field. I'm Kevin Kugler. Good first quarter. Seattle possessed the ball for really 10.45 of the quarter, but a 10-7 ball game. Second possession of the day for the Vikings offense. And a second and seven at their own 27-yard line. Cousins off play action in some trouble, and he'll throw that one away. He looked up and saw Robert Kimdichie in his face. Kirk was complaining about something, but he got pressure off the edge right away and knew his receivers were gloved downfield. There was no chance, and so all he wanted to do was dirt this ball, just get me to a manageable third down here, and let's try and move the sticks. First incompletion today for Kirk Cousins, and now a third down and seven, first third down for the Vikings. And he stressed getting, he just ditched his shoe right there. Did you see that? His shoe is behind the play. Kirk Cousins on one foot has it batted down, and the pass is incomplete. The shoe was not tipped, but the ball was. Honestly, man. I'm not sure I've seen that before. <laughs> Give me the replay on that. Oh, look, he couldn't get his heel inside. Of the, he couldn't get his heel inside of his shoes. He just ditched it. Oh, wow. Not advised, I would think, to play quarterback in this league in sock feet, but that's what Kirk Cousins did there. Difference there, those cleats in the ground, those spikes in the ground, give you an extra inch or two. That might have been the, the problem. Freddie Swain with a fair catch at the 24. Kept both shoes on during that fair catch. We'll be right back after these messages from Pepsi and State Farm. Russell Wilson 7 0 in his career against the Minnesota Vikings and has never lost in this state. He's 3 0 in the state of Minnesota, including his time with the Badgers when they beat the Gophers in 2011. First time he's played in this stadium in downtown Minneapolis. And a first down and 10 at the 24-yard line. And the handoff to Freddie Swain on the end around. And Swain 
has the first down just shy of the 35 yard line a pickup of 10. And Freddie Swain this guy I mean he's really becoming this solid number three option. They want to get him touches talking to Shane Waldron coming into the week. They just want to get 18 the ball because he's done a great job of being a change up receiver to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett their superstars. Nothing wrong with that role there. He's going to get plenty of touches because there's so much attention on those other guys. And they're missing D. Eskridge the rookie who is out with a concussion second round pick in this year's draft. Wilson open on the sideline Metcalf again and into Viking territory out of bounds at the 44 yard line his fifth catch of the first half. Just a little sluggo route by Metcalf, but he realizes the DB so far off. I just got to turn around, Russ. Hey, put it on my back here. Just throw it right to me and slow me down with the football. Excellent recognition by Russell Wilson, understanding that the DB was over the top and they're going to give him a ton of space. Keep hitting those underneath routes. You can't go broke taking a profit, son. Up the 44, Carson burst up the middle. And a good first down run to the 36 yard line picks up eight before Nick Vigil and Daniel Hunter can trip him up. I love what they did on that uh, that last play on the completion to Metcalf. They spread everybody out almost on the sidelines just to see what kind of look they're going to get inside. If they had the right numbers, Russ has got some checks in there to hand that ball off if it looks good in the box. But all he's got to do is count some cows. If there's too many cows in the box. Lob it up top to big number 14. in motion on second and two. There's Carson again. Barrels forward should have the first down at the 33 yard line. So move the chains as Eric Kendricks makes the tackle after Carson gets the first. He's all over the field. He did come into our meeting with no shoes on. So <laughs> that's true. Cousin, maybe that's just that's a, a trend. Vikings thing now. But listen, Kendricks, Eric Kendricks, he's such a stud at this position. And he, he really harped on the fact that they're their defensive line. They love to grab the offensive lineman and absorb those double teams so they can't get to him at the second level. That just lets him run free and hit guys. That's all he wants to do. Top two tacklers in the league in this game in Wagner and Kendricks. Carson behind the Brown block. Scoots forward to the 30, giving three. Blake Lynch on the tackle for Minnesota. They left a little meat on the bone on that run. Dwayne Brown was just a road grader in front of him. Watch this. They're going to pull two offensive linemen right in front of them. Boom, boom. They're getting there. They make their way. They make the hole. It just looks like Carson got tripped up a little bit. He stays up. He's got some serious yardage. Seahawks fans were anxious to see the run game start to develop, and there's been a little bit more of a commitment to that. Already 60 yards rushing in the first half for Seattle. And again, back to the run. Gaping hole for Carson into the secondary, galloping for the end zone and a touchdown. 30 yard score and Chris Carson puts another 15 yards on as he runs halfway up the tunnel. Watch him give this little hip move to Eric Kenricks. He thought he was going to take one of these inside gaps. Just a quick little look inside, boom, and then he redirects himself outside. Kenricks underplayed that, thought he was going in that B gap. Carson says, I'll see you later. Hits the outside off tackle and takes it to Pager. 74 yards rushing on 10 carries for Chris Carson in this first half. Seattle fans were wondering where the run game was. It's here in Minnesota. Pete Carroll fired up with a ground attack from Seattle. Seahawks trying to keep pace in the NFC West. That West is such a tough division. And for the Vikings, the last thing they want to do is start 0-3 with a loss at home. This becomes a really critical drive for Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. I know it's early. I know it's first half. I know it's early in the season, and the season is longer, Mark, but well, this feels like a really big possession coming up in Minnesota. Oh, it absolutely does. And Kirk Cousins has the weight of the world on his shoulders. This stadium, 
is going to be pretty distraught if they don't get any points out of this drive. Here's Smith Marset, not starting it well. Stopped at the 15 yard line as we check in with Kurt Menefee in our studios in Los Angeles. All right, after the scoreless, scoreless first quarter, Matthew Stafford hooks up with Tyler Higby to cap off a 14 play drive. The six yard score puts the Rams on top of the Bucks, 7 0 in the second quarter. Kevin, Mark, and Laura. So the Rams strike first in that matchup. Seattle trying to keep pace with Arizona. One earlier today. San Francisco also unbeaten in what is football's toughest division. From the 15-yard line, Vikings down 17 to 7. Kirk Cousins, both shoes on, play fake. Madison over the middle, and Madison with good yardage on first down. Stop just shy of the 21-yard and 22-yard line. Nothing wrong with starting off with just an easy completion like that. They wanted to take a shot down the field, and he felt those defenders just expand and get underneath those windows. It was an excellent job by Kirk Cousins, just checking that thing down and moving on. They got to get some points on this drive, though. Conklin, the tight end in motion. On second down, here's Madison. Trying to find some running room again. No Dalvin Cook today. It's going to be a lot of Alexander Madison. Not much there with Jordan Brooks in his path. And it brings up third down. Still waiting to see Abdullah come into this game and take a little pressure off Madison and Kirk Cousins. This is his chance. I mean, Kirk was telling us in these games, in, these, uh, in, in our production meeting, he said, hey, this guy, he can run the entire route tree. Let's give him a chance here. This, this third down and short, that's where he makes his money. Stands on the sideline right now on third down and three. Play action. Pocket collapsing. Cousins in trouble. Down he goes. A flag down in the secondary as Rasheed Green and Al Woods meet at Kirk Cousins and drop him. But the Vikings may have just gotten a gift with a flag in the secondary. Holding. Number 28, defense. Ugo Amadi called the flag. Got too much of his jersey here. And really no excuse for all that holding right there. You can see it on the screen. He's affecting his shoulders. He's affecting his progress, impeding his progress downfield. The refs are going to catch that every time. Totally unnecessary, though. He's on the backside of the play. Cousins wasn't even looking over there. He wasn't even a threat. Hey, we're good, we're good. A break for Minnesota. Can they cash in? On first down and 10 at the 27 yard line. Cousins sets up the screen. Madison using his blocks and he got a couple of good ones. And Madison with a first down and more breaks and breaks the tackle and all the way to midfield. Where do you see the block by Garrett Bradbury, number 56, your center, downfield? Watch this. Watch what he does to Jordan Brooks out here on the edge. There he is matched up with them right there. Look at him. Just throws him out of the club. Gives, wow, gives Madison a ton of room on the edge. Watch this. Right, come get some of this, Brooks. Boom. Second catch of 20 yards or more for Madison. Now Amir Abdullah in at running back. Hey, the motion man. Abdullah the carry. Amir Abdullah works his way into Seattle territory in the 46 yard line. Four yard pickup. And let's not forget, this drive has been extended by another silly penalty on the Seattle Peahawk, the Seahawks. And Pete Carroll, I mean, he's just been so frustrated with these penalties. Last week, it was penalties after the play was already over. This week, an unnecessary holding call on the defense on a crucial third down when it felt like the Seahawks were going to take over the tide of this game. The momentum of this game was on their side. And he said we had five different penalties last week. Something happened at the end of a play that didn't help Seattle, said Pete Carroll was in the production meeting yesterday. Good cut by Madison, and he found the open field and another first down. You can see why they were confident, Mark, that they could still run the football effectively, even without Dalvin Cook. They're going to run the ball effectively because of him and this excellent cutback by Madison. Watch this. Slam on the brakes. Boom, number 30. Gives you the block right there, and there he is. He's off to the races in space getting down the field, eating up some yardage. Longest run of the day. And my man, Ham, we got to give him some love. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Fullbacks never get the love. 
Cousins on first down. Good pocket this time. Has time. Finds Jefferson. Jefferson into the secondary. And Jefferson with a first down. Just shy of the 10 at the 12. Watch Kurt Cousins hold this defense with his eyes. He does such a good job of keeping these defenders right there, right underneath. Boom, boom. He looked him right over there and got all that open space for Justin Jefferson. And well done by Justin Jefferson knowing he can slam on the brakes there, sit in that little soft zone spot and wait for the ball. Three receivers top of the screen, first down and 10 at the 12. Cousins looks short, finds his tight end Tyler Conklin, and Conklin trying to drag Seahawks down to the five. Bobby Wagner, the first to get to the Viking tight end. Second down and three, ball just shy of the five. And again, it's worth repeating if you're just joining us late, this drive was over. And a holding penalty called against Ugo Amadi extended the drive. And Kirk Cousins and the Vikings now knocking on the door. Crucial mistake. And Kirk Cousins is going to make you pay here. Feeling in motion on second down. Madison the carry, a little jump cut, a flag down behind the play, and are the Vikings about to get burned by a flag? It's going to be a hold against Minnesota. Holding, number 56, offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. Bradbury, after that excellent block on the edge, I think he gets a little too much of the jersey here. Yeah, just a tick. I mean, I'm stunned. I say stunned that the quarterback with me in the booth does not like that play. I'm shocked. Oh, no. Almost every play, huh? So with the penalty, second of 13 at the 15-yard line. Motion by Osborne out of the backfield. Pump to him. Cousins with pressure on his backside. Just got rid of it as Jordan Brooks planted him into the turf at the 25. They tried to set up a little screen, but Bobby Wagner wasn't having it. Watch him diagnose this thing from the backfield. Watch him just stay with the halfback. He's got him in man-to-man. -man. You got to see, I'd like to see Madison throw a bluff block on that edge rusher that's free off of Brooks right there, just to get Bobby Wagner to hold up for just half a second and take the hit off the quarterback that might have given him the opportunity to get free and get some yards on that screen. So now third and 13 for Minnesota at the 15 of Seattle. Cousins steps away from pressure to the end zone. Talk with Mike Zimmer. They love Adam Thielen in the red zone. 36% of the team's red zone targets have been to Thielen in the last two years. And Thielen, if it stands, is Watch this all 22. The They're going to use this post inside to gobble up the safety. Here comes Adam Thielen on the outside post. And Kirk Cousins, he's going to stare that safety down. He's saying, hey, take the cheese down the middle of the field. I'm going to let Adam. He lets Adam Thielen work on the outside. It's Adam Thielen's job to beat the cornerback. It's Kirk Cousins' job to beat the safety with his eyes. And an absolute dart from Kirk Cousins. We got somebody storming the field though. Yeah, you've got the crowd cheering because the guy on the field before Clay Martin would tell us what the penalty was, was tackled near the goal line by security here in Minnesota. Who gave me a chance to explain that play, so I got to tip that guy five bucks. <laughs> Result of the play is a touchdown. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number six, defense. 
Minnesota will have that 15 yard penalty enforced on the kickoff. Andre Diggs with the penalty. This is what we're talking about with Adam Thielen out on the edge. Watch him just give a little sugar, a little pastry at the top of this right. Bam! Just sticks him for just a second, creates enough separation, and Kirk Cousins delivering an absolute strike. There's no room for error because Diggs is coming after that ball. Excuse me, DJ Reed's coming after that ball over the top. You cannot miss that ball, not even by six inches, Kevin. The drive extended by a third down penalty, and the Vikings cash it in. Cousins to Thielen, three-point game. This is the reason why that drive stayed alive. Watch the defender right here just get too much. Hugo Amadi right there, he's just grabbing him too much. On the opposite side of the play, he didn't even need to do it. Boom, they get a fresh set of downs, and who's going to make you pay? The executioner, Kirk Cousins. Look at that. Look at those eyes, baby. And they had to overcome the penalty that backed him up to that third and 13. Kickoff from the goal line, trying to find some room to roam, and across the 20 down to the 21. That's where Seattle will start first down and 10. Every Wednesday, Matt Singer brings you the biggest superstars in Mark Sanchez. The new season is here. Watch the crazy reveals right now and catch all new eye-popping episodes every Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. I think I'm a little biased, but... We all remember Baby Alien. I mean, it was, I didn't even know it was going to matter that much to me when you were revealed as Baby <laughs> Alien. Now, of course, it's my favorite thing ever. And there's DJ. Look at my man. He said, wait a second. He's been running around the house singing all these songs, playing with this weird puppet for the last two months. Now I know why. That was a great reveal right there for him. How could you never bring Baby Alien on the road with us? Maybe next week. Say that to me. Hand off to Penny Hart and Hart on the sweep to the edge. Was it hard to manipulate the baby alien? Oh, oh, was it ever? I was doing so many zooms with a puppeteer master, okay? He had worked on Cranky Anchors. He worked on all these shows, and he was teaching me how to bring this in, inanimate object to life, and it was much harder than you think. I, I mean, I was down in Gatorade and Pedialyte to make sure my hand didn't cramp. And here I've always thought bringing an inanimate object to life would be really easy. <laughs> Second and three at the 28 yard line. Alex Collins, the single back. Wilson off the play fake. His tight end is open. It's Will Disley and Disley breaking tackles down the sideline and out of bounds. Inside the Viking 35 at the 33. Xavier Woods had a shot at him and Disley shrunk him aside. Kev, I want you to watch this fake play fake right here. Get Eric Kendricks just enough to give Disley an opportunity to get behind him. There it is, boom. Quick play flake, gives him a chance to get past him, Disley that is, and give Russell Wilson an open throwing lane. That's all you need to do is attract those guys. And when you put that ball out the way Russell Wilson does in one hand, you're attracting those defenders like moths to a light. He lost his shoe as well, and the Vikings have to take a timeout. They had too many on the field, and McKenzie Alexander was late running off. So the timeout. Called by Minnesota with 4.09 remaining in the first half. We will return to Minneapolis in a moment. Terrific Sunday in Minneapolis as we welcome you back to the Twin Cities with Mark Sanchez, Laura Oakman on the field. I'm Kevin Kugler. Not a lot of defense being played. We may not be in Big 12 country, but it kind of feels like 9.1 yards per play for Seattle, 8.6 for Minnesota. My kind of ball game. <laughs> Quarterbacks love offense. First down at 10 at the 33 yard line. We got the numbers are running. Oh. Wilson floats it up instead down the sideline for Metcalf. Excellent coverage from Patrick <laughs> Peterson as we go back to Los Angeles. Check in for a minute. Well, the Bucks against the Rams. A little uh, trick play here. Chris Godwin, the wide receiver, lines up at running back, takes it in for a two yard score, and just like that, the game's all even. And everybody's all zen, right? 7 7, late in the second. Kevin? Russell Wilson's going to the line of scrimmage with a lot of plays in his toolbox. I would have liked to see him when he saw six in the box like that to get to one of their run checks, especially where he has the ability to run the zone read option. Low snap, Wilson picks it up off the turf and throws a strike to Rocket. Short of the first.
first down as Patrick Peterson makes the stop. But Lockett with the second catch. And that's what you want. When you get guys like Harrison Smith down in the box, they're daring you to throw the ball. So what does he do? If he doesn't get a bad snap right there, he'd give a quick flash fake to the halfback. But because it was such a bad fake, that's why the ball was a little late. And Lockett's out there backpedaling any later. And a savvy vet like Patrick Peterson, he's taking that thing the other way for six. Third and three. Wilson with a four-man rush. In trouble. Using his wheels, buying time, and he'll throw this one away. And it'll bring up fourth down. It was a great bluff by Mike Zimmer and his defense. They showed a bunch of guys up near the line of scrimmage. And right at the snap of the ball, they started to peel out of there and played a cover two look and just zoned everything off. Excellent job by Vigil right there. Uh, eyeing down the tight end and then passing off routes downfield by Harrison Smith. Great call by Mike Zimmer, changing it up. Looking like man and then dropping out into a two deep zone coverage with five defenders underneath handling all their quick game answers. From 44 yards, Myers' kick is no good. And the streak ends at 37 straight made field goals for Jason Myers, the 44-yarder. Drifts wide left. Still 17-14. Seahawks by three. Last time Jason Myers missed a field goal, November 3rd, 2019, against Tampa Bay. 37 straight before that miss. And now Minnesota will take over. First down and 10, trailing by three with 3.14 remaining in the first half. Here's Madison trying to get to the edge on first down, and Madison turns up field to get a couple to the 36-yard line. Al Woods tracked him down. And this is the kind of complimentary football that Mike Zimmer was talking about. He said, our guys got to feed off each other. They got to use the other, uh, the other side of the ball, the other phase of the ball's energy, and that's exactly what they've done, overcoming a third down and capitalizing on a crucial penalty then they overcome their own penalty in their own territory, the offense that is. I mean, they're they're just really bowing up on defense and confusing Russell Wilson. Kerry Hyder Jr. down for Seattle while they tend to him will step aside. Head coach back at his defensive roots, longtime defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer before becoming the head coach of the Vikings, talking to Harrison Smith. Those two veterans of the game go over things on the sidelines while the offense works. Second and eight at the 36-yard line for Kirk Cousins of the Viking offense. Sets up the screen to Madison. Madison got a block at the 40-yard line, and then Adams there to meet him, and he fights free of that tackle. And close to the first down, just a yard shy, as another screen works for Minnesota. And this just keeps the defense off balance. Everybody's trying to rush this quarterback so fast. Look at Puna Ford getting in there right away. And then he just teardrops that ball over Puna Ford. Excellent job by Kirk Cousins, giving him a catchable ball and letting him run right up the sidewalk. The sidewalk, that's the numbers. That's the, that's the landing point that you want these screens on for your big lineman to get out in front of you. Third down and one, Conklin in motion. And Ham with the carry. They give it to the fullback, and fullback C.J. Ham with his first carry of the year gets the first down. And that should take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes have been a real problem this year for the Minnesota Vikings. Their defense has allowed 24 points inside the two-minute warning. But it's the offense working when we return. During the break, Mark Sanchez begging our producer, Mark Teitelman, give C.J. Ham some love. I mean, he's from Augustana, South Dakota, and Sioux Falls. He never gets any love, but I call him the Hamburglar. You know why, Kev? Because he goes in and steals some yards and steals the first down. Did you just call him that now, or is that something you've called him for years? Him and I have been best buds for ages. <laughs> Madison rumbling into Seattle territory to first down to the 44 pickup of 11. Trey Flowers on the tackle. Vikings going to hurry up now. Still two timeouts remaining for Minnesota. I thought we would have seen Abdullah in this situation. 
Cousins checks it down to Madison, and Madison with a catch it down to the 39-yard line. Barton and Wagner there on the stop. And you hear Kirk Cousins, he's yelling out, Sunday, Sunday. He's not telling you what day of the week it is, Kev. He's telling the center, hey, I need that ball on set. And he got it on set as he gives to Madison, picks his way through traffic, and Madison down to the 37-yard line. Dunlap with the tackle, now brings up a big third down. And I love what Clint Kubiak's doing, working this clock with the run game. Nothing wrong milking this clock down so they don't have to put their defense out there because they've struggled inside of two minutes. He knows that, and they know they're facing a dangerous quarterback. You do not want to give him the ball back. So a third down and four, an injury timeout, timeout uh, is Seattle. used, and they're Seattle first. is charged with the timeout. timeout. Well, they tend Please to the, the injured player, player Carlos Dunlap. Let's seconds, check in with Kurt Menefee to see what's coming up in the Verizon halftime. Clint Kubiak upstairs, the offensive coordinator for the Vikings. I mean, he wouldn't say a word in that production <laughs> meeting. <laughs> he, should be, uh, he should be working for the FBI. Look who they got up top, Amir Abdullah. Here comes Adams. Here comes Adams. Here he comes. Picks his spot. Cousins fires. Thielen with the catch. That'll be a first down to the 30-yard line. Amadi on the tackle. Vikings hustle it up to the line with 45 seconds until halftime. Still have two timeouts this Minnesota. Cousins in and out of the hands of Justin Jefferson. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 34 seconds left first half. Those are some of the most difficult routes and difficult balls to catch when you're running right back at the quarterback. Got to hang on to that thing. Got to hang on to that thing and knife up the field. Not the end of the world, though. They stopped the clock. They got plenty of time here. Second down and 10. Cousins on the keep. Kirk Cousins to the edge, and Jamal Adams runs him out. He wasn't fooling Jamal Adams. <laughs> Jamal Adams is getting hungry. He wants in on the action. He's coming all the way down for the safety position. Great read by Cousins on Robinson off the edge. That's the right read to keep that ball on Alton Robinson there. But not enough juice. <laughs> not enough juice in the tank to get by Jamal Adams. That's a tough matchup for number eight. So a third down and eight from the 28-yard line. Cousins, quick toss, Jefferson looking for the grab, and he's got it, a first down at the 19 of Seattle. Tough catch to make, and he pulls it in with Amadi dripped all over it. And a timeout is used by Minnesota. They have one timeout. remaining, 19 Minnesota, seconds, seconds to go second in this first half. Please set the game clock to 24 seconds. And they're going to put Two time four. back on the clock, set it up to 24 seconds remaining in this first half. 24 seconds, 2-4. Two, 24 two, four seconds left in the first half. 17-14 Seattle lead alongside Mark Sanchez. I'm Kevin Cooper. We welcome you back into our Please NFL on Fox. 20, so this has been seconds. a good first half. Both offenses going up and down the field. Some key mistakes leading to points. And now the Vikings trying to grab the lead before halftime. And Coach Carroll talked about it at nauseum, right? I mean, he, he just said, we can't shoot ourselves in the foot. We can't just give away free opportunities for this offense, especially with a veteran, experienced guy like Kirk Cousins. He'll make you pay. Kirk Cousins has had a terrific first half, as has Russell Wilson. Both of these quarterbacks have done the job so far today. Cousins on the slant, catches made, rumbling for the end zone, and tripped up inside the five. Tyler Conklin was closing in on his second touchdown of the first half, picks up 16. It's first and goal. And the timeout used with 17 seconds left in the half. And watch this slight little pick route 
by the veteran Adam Thielen. He's going to get up here and pick this guy and give his tight end Conklin a chance to go right underneath. He's going to take his guy with him. Boom, just get a little piece of the backer right there and give him some free space and well executed by Kirk Cousins, giving him a ball, an easy catchable ball. Those big guys, tight ends, running backs, take a little speed off of it when they're coming from the outside. We saw Jefferson just drop one of those balls. Those are the toughest First ones to catch. It took a little speed off it, gave him a nice off-speed catchable pitch. And now you're in the huddle and now out of the huddle for the Vikings with no timeouts, 20 seconds, and a first and goal at the three-yard line. Madison in motion, fake the give. Cousins throws for the end zone. It's Jefferson who's got the touchdown. whip route he's gonna show an inside route slam on the brakes and get back to the front pylon they're just gonna fake that ball inside to Madison quickly and look at Justin Jefferson flying out of that route showing the slant full speed and that ability to slam on the brakes change direction and get outside how about Clint Kubiak and Kirk Cousins not even flinching when Justin Jefferson drops that ball all they do is go right back to him for a key third down conversion and a touchdown. Three touchdown passes in the first half for Kirk Cousins at a 21-17 Minnesota lead. We'll be right back after this message from Progressive. Three for three on third down on the drive mark. 12 plays, 66 yard scoring drive. And watch, they're going to get this defense to start moving in the direction to the left there. And look at that, just a little teardrop over the top by Kirk Cousins with the finesse finish. I love it. We've seen a grand total of eight incomplete passes between the two quarterbacks combined in this first half. Really high-level play and a 21-17 lead for the Minnesota Vikings. DJ Dallas will watch this one sail through the end zone for the touchback. And a chance to double up if you're Minnesota because they won the toss and deferred, so they're going to get the football to start in the second half. 21-17. Now, this has been danger territory. Under two minutes remaining in the first half. The most points allowed in the NFL. The Vikings have allowed 24 points inside the two-minute warning in the first half of their two games this year. 14 to Cincinnati, 10 last week to Arizona. And a huge point of emphasis if you're Mike Zimmer. But how much pressure has been taken off this defense? Only allowing 16 seconds and eating up so much clock finishing that drive especially after that drop by Justin Jefferson Seattle does have two timeouts we'll see what they elect to do here from their own 25 got to get a couple chunk plays here Wilson over the middle to Homer and Homer with a first down to the 37 yard line there's the timeout used Nick Vigil with the tackle timeout stops it with nine seconds remaining in this first half one timeout remaining for Seattle and the ball to 37 yard line so mark if you're Seattle now you have nine seconds two plays max with the timeout right yeah two plays with the timeout the idea is you got to get one of those chunk plays you know 10 15 20 yards something like that and you're okay to use the entire 53 and a third yards that this field allows you right you don't have to get out of bounds reminder you got a uh, timeout in your back pocket and then we'll reassess and see where we're at with the field goal uh, with the field goal kicking team you don't have to do a, a hurricane situation we used to call it hurricane when you run the field goal team on so that's uh they're they're, they're sitting pretty right now if they want to try and get three but they need a chunk play empty backfield nine seconds to go in the half so wilson is the vikings rush four Checks down short to the tight end, Gerald Everett. Everett shrugs off the tackle and out of bounds at the 48-yard line. One second left in the half after the 11-yard pickup. Too far for a field goal. I think we might see just a little heave to the end zone here. Down this, uh, maybe down this short sideline. See what they try and do with Russ. Maybe they try and design one for him to roll out a little bit and get a little space. Now it looks like it's going to be down at the bottom of the field. Watch these three guys. They're going to be all running down. They call this a jump ball. Vikings with three defenders in the end zone for this final play of the half bar and a penalty. And a check down out of the backfield. It's Homer. Travis Homer at the 40. Breaks a tackle. Homer to the 30. And Homer upended at the
at the 22 yard line by Cameron Bynum. If you're a Vikings fan, you were a little nervous there after he broke that first tackle mark, knowing what's happened at the end of first halves this year. Vikings fans were holding their breath there for a second. They were expecting the Hail Mary, and then they tried to hit him with the counter punch and the little dump off to Homer. It didn't quite work, but, I mean, Russell Wilson had the stats a little bit, huh? Had some yards. <laughs> 21-17, Minnesota with a lead at the break. Stay tuned for the Verizon Halftime coming up right after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Minnesota Vikings with a 21 to 17 lead at the break alongside former NFL quarterback Mark Sanchez. I'm Kevin Kugler. Some hidden points that you didn't really see coming necessarily. The Vikings able to stack them up towards the end of that first half. And they really capitalized. They score the touchdown to Thielen. Then Seattle misses a field goal. Boom, they come right back, march down the field in a two minute situation. Score to Jefferson. That's 14 points unanswered. Now they get the ball coming out of halftime. I mean, this is huge. This is a 14-point switch for them, and they could really take over momentum. These fans are ready to blow the top off of this place. This is the chance. Kirk Cousins, lead this team, get me seven more points, and really put Seattle in a big hole. Both quarterbacks have played well through one half of football today Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins excellent numbers three touchdowns for Cousins one for Wilson defense has had some struggles with those two quarterbacks at times touch back out to the 25 as we check in with Laura Oakman who talked with both coaches Laura you guys know it's very nice when you talk to a happy Mike Zimmer and he was happy about the offense in the first half saying that he thought Kirk was having a great game like the screen game like the run game defensively he said they've thrown a few different wrinkles at us we weren't expected we need to adjust and what he told the guys at halftime was just do your job stop freelancing as for Pete Carroll he said we got to catch up on those screens I asked him how do you think the guys have responded he told us he was worried about that after last week's loss he told me we're on fire Madison on first down, breaking tackles, and Madison with nine on that first down carry. It's interesting that Zimmer mentioned the screen game because Dalvin Cook not in the game, so they've relied on Madison both for the screen game and for runs like this. And look at him. He's up for the challenge. He says, hey, feed me, coach. Let's go. I've done it against this unit before. I've played against Seattle. I don't got pregame jitters. I'm ready to rock. I've been over 100 yards on the ground against these guys. Keep feeding me. 112 last year, but was stuffed on that fourth and one play late as Seattle came back to get the win a year ago. Madison fighting through Dunlap's tackle and he gets the first down to the 37 yard line. We were at practice on Friday with the Minnesota Vikings, and one of the first things you said as you watched practice was Minnesota's got an outstanding screen game, and they have really relied on that screen game here this afternoon. They sure do, and to have an outstanding screen game, you got to practice it, and you got to practice it time and time again, over and over, to get the running backs used to getting in phase with their particular offensive linemen that have to get out on the edge. It's a difficult thing to do and accomplish, but Clint Kubiak has these guys running like a well-oiled machine. Thielen lining up in the backfield at the running back spot, and he's in trouble. Excellent defense that time from Seattle. Jordan Brooks among those that were not fooled at all by Thielen catching that one out of the backfield. And you could tell these linebackers, they've seen this before. They knew, hey, Thielen, 19, 19's in the backfield. You hear him yelling right before the snap, and they played it perfectly. They weren't shocked. They weren't surprised. They knew exactly what was coming and sniffed that thing out. First tackle for loss for either team today. This is a four-yard loss. Second down and 14, back to the 33-yard line. Pressure coming. Cousins throws Jefferson. He's got it. Jefferson turns first down. <laughs> I mean, 
if you follow this guy on Instagram, his name's Jay Jettas for a reason. He's like a jet. He flies down the field and then slams on the brakes. You see that throw by on the defense? Wow. And listen, all you guys watching across the country, you sure you want to play quarterback? You can be on the ground a lot. <laughs> on first down, here's Madison. Nice cut, turns up field into Seattle territory. To the 48-yard line, picks up four. Jamal Adams undercut him there and dropped him. After that four-yard pickup, Madison will leave. After the Adams tackle, and on comes Amir Abdullah. Madison's been the workhorse today. Five catches for 60 yards, 11 carries, 52 yards. Very productive in the absence of Dalvin Cook. He's been so active in that screen game, catching balls out of the backfield. Second and six. Cousins. Nobody open. Now he finds his tight end, Conklin, and Conklin close to a first down. Really good play by the Vikings offensive quarterback. I mean, Kirk Cousins, the fact that they got four yards on here, it's just supposed to be a little screen right here. They're going to fake to the back across, and it's, hey, that's all we got to do. Well, they got him dead to right. They read it perfectly on the edge. Kirk's got nowhere to go with this ball. He starts ad-libbing. He starts vamping a little bit, and there goes Conklin just uncovering, realizing the guy covering him is going to go rush the quarterback, turn around, show my hands, show my numbers. And the fact that they got a third and short here with these two guys making a play. And on third and short, Madison has the first down right with the tackle at the 40 yard line. You mentioned ad libbing. It was an ad lib that got them in position for that field goal last week that they didn't make, but an ad lib by quarterback and wide receiver last week that got him set up. You're exactly right. And Clint Kubiak was afraid to admit it in our <laughs> meeting. I told I asked him about it on the third and ten. They gave him a chance to get into field goal range against Arizona in the last drive of the game. I said, Coach, how'd they know to run that whip route versus cover two man? He said, Well, did they tell you the truth? And the truth was, that was those two guys playing street football, Thielen and Cousins. Off the play fake, Cousins to the air, looking for Thielen, a little too tall for his wide receiver that time. DJ Reed out there in coverage. An incomplete pass makes it second and ten. And watch Thielen. He's just going to run a quick little comeback route. What they wanted to get is Jefferson in the middle and Wagner kind of muddied up the window inside there with Jordan Brooks, number 56. Kirk Cousins had to get rid of that ball early. Just want to keep it high and outside. No harm, no foul. Opening possession of the second half. Second and 10 at the 40-yard line for Minnesota. Abdullah. Will cut back and Abdullah with some fresh legs down to the 34 yard line. The former second round pick out of Nebraska picks up six. And Kirk had so many positive things to say about Amir Abdullah, not just in the run game, he's coming off the field now, but in the pass game. He said, This guy can run the entire route tree, he can run hitches, he can run slants. We trust him to run curls and deep dig routes. We trust him to run by defenders, especially linebackers out on the edge. So they got a lot of faith in this kid. Five of six on third down today after going two for ten a week ago. Osborne in motion. Third down and four. Cousins. Open. Catch made by Jefferson again. His seventh catch of the afternoon as we check in with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. 14 years in the league. Turns 35 in December. And he's still got that speed. Deshaun Jackson. Look at how open he is. 75 yards from Matthew Stafford. Stafford's third touchdown pass of the day. The Rams are opening it up against the Bucks, 21-7, right now very early in the third quarter. Kevin? And Norton's defense looking into the backfield, seeing both running backs in now, Abdullah and Madison. On first down and 10 at the 26, this is Madison. And Madison runs right into the arms of Bobby Wagner and a little bit of extracurricular activity. The six-time first-team All-Pro, Bobby Wagner, hearing it from this partisan crowd. Look at these guys all in the backfield. One, two, three. That inverted wishbone in the backfield, that just gives them extra blockers off the edge. You see Abdullah bluff off the edge, and then Ham, also known as the Hammer, going up, slamming it in there, making some room for his guy, Madison. You're giving him two different nicknames. Well, either one. Those are, those are his Depends two favorite. Depends on his role. I got like six or seven more okay, that good. him and I talk about every week. So That's, the, that's, a, that's called the broadcast team. Stay tuned for more Ham nicknames. Second and seven to the sideline. Thielen. Thielen at the 15-yard line, and he slides down with a first at the 14. Pickup of nine, and Puna Ford down to cover him up, but the Vikings move the chains again. Look at Kirk Cousins. He's staring down the barrel. He knows exactly what's coming.
coming. Here comes Jordan Brooks, big number 56. They're bringing one too many, then he could get. And what does he do? He just hits him with a little fadeaway, falling off his back foot, and gets his ball to Adam Thielen quickly and accurately so he can make a play after the catch. That's high-level, graduate-level quarterback play right there. I know he's, he's not flashy, but he sure can't execute. Addison on first down, nowhere to go that time. Ran right into the middle of the pile. Alton Robinson, who came in for Kerry Hyder when he was injured, first to contact Alexander Madison. You talk about graduate level quarterback play. We're seeing it from Kirk Cousins in this ballgame. 218 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, only five incompletions. Listen, he might be the kind of guy to call his pants trousers, and he might wear them up to his navel. But I tell you what, you put him in shoulder pads and a helmet and a pair of cleats, this dude is a stone cold killer with the football. He's so decisive. I love his game and I love the way he's playing right now. He does call his pants trousers? That, that's a stretch. I'm not totally sure about that. Okay, second and 11 of the 15 yard line. Cousins with protection behind Jefferson. And really one of the rare errant throws we've seen today from Kirk Cousins. And I'll tell you what, that was just a miscommunication with Cousins and Jefferson. He's expecting him to slam on the brakes and not break back out of this route. It's just a little choice route in the middle. A little juke route. He thought he was going to slam on the brakes or at least slow down just a little bit. He didn't want to run him into traffic. He didn't want to run him into the to the defenders outside. You see 28 right there. He's just trying to pr uh, protect him. He's trying to protect him from Amadi. So six for seven on third, but this is a long one. Third and 11. Cousins with the fake. Spins out of pressure. Ball knocked out. And Cousins will just dive on it at the 25-yard line. Daryl Taylor able to rip it out of the hands of Kirk Cousins, and it brings up four. You see the frustration on Kirk Cousins' face right there, knowing he missed an opportunity. They might have had someone downfield. Listen, that's just an excellent play by the defender right there because Kirk's got two hands on it. He's doing exactly what you tell him to do. He's got it close to the body. But look at what a heads-up play by the defender to knock that ball out. Unbelievable. That, that was picture-perfect textbook quarterback play by Kirk Cousins and just an excellent play by the defense. Now a 43 yard field goal try for Greg Joseph and that one right down the middle and that'll extend the Vikings lead to seven midway through the third. Here's today's Domino's stat tracker. Stats of these two quarterbacks are worth tracking. Russell Wilson, 15 of 19, 218 yards and a touchdown. Kirk Cousins, also 218 yards, has three scores, 21 of 27. These two quarterbacks are playing exceptional football right now. Minnesota has scored 17 unanswered points to take this 24-17 lead. And this continues a long-standing battle between Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins. Head-to-head -head in their NCAA careers, Michigan State's win came on a Hail Mary against Wisconsin. Russell Wilson got a little revenge in the 2011 Big Ten Championship game. These two guys very familiar with one another. And once they got to this level, it's been heavily tilted towards number three. He's undefeated against the Vikings. He sure is, and he comes in with that winning streak right now, but don't count Kirk Cousins out, man. He's got something to say about all this all this talk about other quarterbacks. He said, hey, man, I'm a top 10 guy. I can hang with all the best. That calf in motion, first possession of the second half for Seattle at the six and a half minute mark as Carson gets the carry. Carson out just shy of the 30 yard line brings up second down. And the run game today has been solid for Seattle as well. Carson over 74 yards now, but comes up holding his left hamstring and hobbles to the sideline. No Rashad Penny already. He's out with a calf injury. You've got Alex Collins, Travis Homer, and DJ Dallas as the three remaining backs. Looks like they're going with Collins right now, number 41, but that could be a huge blow to Seattle. Somebody's gonna have to pick up that slack and even more pressure put on Russell Wilson. Wilson hobbles to the sideline, 11 carries, 79 yards. Crowd trying to make it rough on the Seattle quarterback. Second down, it's Collins to the edge. Oh, a stiff arm to buy some space. He shoved Daniel Hunter out of the way to get the first down. Just a violent stiff arm. That's what you want when you stiff arm these defenders. Watch this. Ooh, get some of that right in your face. 
And that's not an easy guy to stiff arm. No. The Neil Hunter, I mean, he's got some of the longest arms in the league. This guy makes a living off of grabbing guys like that. That's like a tail of the tape, two boxers. Play action, they want the screen, looking for Collins. Couldn't get it to him. Everson Griffin providing the heat at second down. Everson Griffin, Griffin, uh, Griffin, excuse me, the savvy vet out of USC. He's gonna give me a hard time for butchering his name right there, but he wasn't fooled at all on this screen. Great job right here. Attacking Russell Wilson, getting up in his face and giving him enough pressure to have to throw this ball away. Well done staying home on the backside for Minnesota. This brings up a second and long. They've got to get a couple yards here to get to a third and manageable because this place is going to be real loud on third down. Vikings with five defensive backs on second and ten. Three receivers top of the screen. Wilson, pressure comes. He's in trouble. He's Everson Griffin got him. Back-to-back -back pressures from Griffin and his first sack of the season. Everson Griffin is jacked up. Watch him. Coming in from your outside position here. He just hits him with a spin move and comes back inside. Right on Dwayne Brown. Look at that spin move. Eyeing the quarterback. That's a hungry rusher right there. 75 and a half sacks in his career. This crowd is on fire in Minnesota. Real careful not to give up a cheap one here by Russell Wilson on third and long. Third and 19. They set up the screen to Homer. Homer looking for a block. Tracked down by Daniil Hunter. And it's fourth down. The Vikings defense gets the stop. Turned away thanks to Hunter and Griffin. And watch Patrick Peterson. This doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but he's up here at the top of your screen, and he knows he's just got to force this ball back inside. And he knows with the NFL's emphasis rule, he's normally going to just go chop down those linemen, but he can't do it. So credit to him for understanding the change in rules, the emphasis by the NFL, being the savvy vet that he is. Coming here, working with Mike Zimmer, he said he's got a chance to perfect his game, to finely tune some of his mechanics and right there that was a huge play to stop that screen before it got going flag down during the return of dd westbrook off to the first seattle punt of the day from michael dixon this flag likely going to back the vikings up with 348 to go in the third clay martin high school basketball coach in james kick, oklahoma holding receiving team number 44 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick first down timeout a timeout in Minnesota. The Vikings defense flexing their formidable muscle. Hold on to a seven-point lead. Plenty of time left in this one. 3.48 to go in the third, but the Vikings are red hot. Three straight scores. Touchdown, touchdown, field goal. Long drives each. They start this possession from their 15-yard line. Cousins on first down, another screen set up for Madison. Wagner charging in, and Wagner along with Jamal Adams make the stop. Well, we talked about the defensive head coach in Mike Zimmer and the relationship with a veteran quarterback with Kirk Cousins. And Laura, that's really been growing, hasn't it? It really has. Zimmer and Cousins have been watching film together every Thursday. First time they've done that. And Zimmer told us it's so much more than film. They're working on their communication. He said, I'm seeing such a different side of Kirk, and it's been so good for both of us. 45 minutes, he said, every Thursday of talking freely and talking about what both of them can do better. It, this is new, and that relationship is changing. Changing for the better, it would appear, for Kirk Cousins, who's had a terrific day yet again. Cousins open. He's found Thielen, a first down to the 34-yard line as we check in once more in Los Angeles with Kirk Hennessy. All right, it's been a rough game for the Bucks at the Rams. This is Rob Gronkowski taking a big hit. He has left the game to have x-rays on either his ribs or his back. On that drive, though, Brady capped it off with a one-yard touchdown to make it a touchdown game midway through the third quarter. There are a few better at the quarterback position on the quarterback sneak than Tom Brady. Sneaking in from that one-yard line. Here's Madison. Madison rumbles forward to the 40-yard line, a five-yard gain. Jordan Brooks on the tackle. Let's go back to the field and catch a moment ago. 
Watch Conklin here off the side. Hold these defenders right here and create a big lane for Kirk Cousins to hit Thielen. Right here, watch him get Jordan Brooks. Boom, Jordan Brooks bites. Cousins manipulating zone defenders with his eyes. Excellent job of finding completions down the field and staying strong in that pocket. That takes a long time. That takes a veteran, a savvy veteran, to move those linebackers around. Like you said, Kevin, moths to a light. And good protection from those guys up front to a lot in that time. Cousins on the roll. Looking downfield. He had Jefferson, and I think he was actually aiming for Thielen. Neither of them could pull it in. I think he was trying to hit Thielen over the top, and Jefferson thought, yeah, I got this. This is in my catch radius. I got to go upstairs and get one and help my guy like he made a bad throw, but it was actually going to Thielen. And Reed getting away with a little physicality out there. And Kirk Cousins knows that was a close one, and Jefferson with that little deflection throws it off enough that Thielen can't pull it in. Third and five for the Vikings. It's Osborne in motion. Seattle rushes four. It's Osborne on the sideline. First down. Look at the power of Osborne into Seattle territory, driving through Quandre Diggs. And a crucial catch. Accurate throw, giving him a chance to catch and run and get this first down. Let's not forget KJ Osborne, two straight games this year. Five plus reception, 75 plus yards. He's extending drives. They're trusting this kid more and more. And his offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak, said he's got the perfect temperament for football. This guy, he understands what's at stake, and it doesn't phase him. He can go execute with the best of them. First catch of the afternoon goes for 11 yards. Here's Madison. Not much there. Good job by that defensive front of Seattle. Holds him to no gain. It's second down. Bobby Wagner, no surprise. Right at the bottom of that pile, Puna Ford was there as well. There goes 31, Abdullah into the game again. Look for him in the pass game. They love getting the ball in his hands. They give him a chance to uh, give Alexander Madison, Madison number 25, a break. Give him a little blow as he goes over there and talks to his coach, Kennedy Pola, one of the best in the running back game and teaching these young backs how to play. He's got his work cut out for him today without Dalvin Cook. There goes. There goes Abdullah right at the bottom of your screen. Hey, ball 54. Ball 54. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Second and ten. Cousins settles in over the middle. Jefferson wide open. Jefferson inside the 25. And Diggs finally able to pull him down at the 20-yard line. 29-yard pitch and catch from Cousins to Jefferson. We have reached the end of quarter number three. Vikings with the lead and on the move when we return. And watch this out of the bunch formation. K.J. Osborne's going to clear it out. Abdul is going to attract a linebacker. And Justin Jefferson's going to scream through the middle on this in route. Well, now everything declares. Everybody's got a man. Boom, man to man, man to man, man to man. You gotta cover your guy. Trey Flowers dropped him in coverage. He's gotta match him. Minnesota starts his fourth quarter with a lead and a first down at the 20-yard line. Cousins with time to overlook the entire field finds Conklin short. Good tackle by Brooks. And down at the 17-yard line. And Brooks stays down on the turf. Flowers was really frustrated after that play you showed us coming out of the start of the quarter. Look at he's trying to talk to his coach about it. But there's nowhere else to go. He's got to plaster his guy. We'll be right back after this. Jordan Brooks, the injured Seahawk. You'll see the injury here. He pops back up, immediately starts holding his left leg, and then goes down. Athletic training staff came out, and they brought the cart out immediately, and Jordan Brooks is on his way to the locker room. We haven't seen Perry Hyder since early in this ballgame when he left in concussion protocol. So Seahawks down a couple here. Second and seven at the 17-yard line as Thielen's in motion. Madison looking for a little room on that left side. There's not much there. And it brings up third down as Cody Barton, who came in for Jordan Brooks, makes the tackle. Crucial third down, but most importantly for Kirk Cousins going into this thing, they don't need a completion. They don't need to score right here. 
they're okay taking three points and going up 10 in this fourth quarter they'll be just fine now anything extra is is gravy that's awesome but potentially look for a mismatch on one of these backers always be ready for Justin Jefferson right now he's in the slot 10th play of this drive Addison in motion on third down Cousins steps away from pressure pumps and throws from Madison and was he throwing for Madison or was he just throwing that one away? It looked like he got caught in between. I think it declared at the end. And excellent job by Madison working the ladder. Those are those little hash mark looking things on the sidelines. He faked like he was going to go up the field and then turn back down the ladder. That's exactly what you tell these backs to do when they run out of real estate on the sideline. Start like you're going to run up the, uh, up the field like a wheel route, slam on the brakes and turn around and give your quarterback the numbers. I don't know if Kurt was expecting it for Madison. He just doesn't have that quite, uh, that rapport with him quite yet. 34-yard try for Greg Joseph. Joseph's kick extends the lead to 10. 27-17. Vikings looking for win number one. They're up by 10 at home in the fourth. times in his career as Russell Wilson led a fourth quarter or overtime comeback he's going to have to do it again if Seattle's going to move to two and one down 27 17 after the Vikings have scored on four straight possessions 20 straight points for Minnesota to take the 27 17 lead and the momentum's all in their favor it's all about purple it's all about the skull champ they got this place rocking it's going to be nice and loud for Russell Wilson he's going to need one of his signature splash plays to quiet this crowd. Tomorrow on Fox, the blackout continues on a thrilling 9-1-1. TV's high-octane drama is back wilder than ever. Don't miss a gripping all-new 9-1-1. Tomorrow night is 8, 7 central on Fox. Good to see Chris Carson back out there if you're a Seattle fan. He looked off the field earlier. He's back out there leading the way on the ground. 11 carries, 79 yards today for Seattle. the 25-yard line on first down. And it's Carson who gets the carry. They'll test him right away, and he runs into the arms of Dalvin Tomlinson as we check in with Laura Oakley. Testing Chris Carson and what it was when he did lift off the field. Athletic trainers were working on that hamstring of his, but the good news is he is back in. Kevin, you brought up Kerry Hyder. He was ruled out with a concussion, and Jordan Brooks, it's always scary with that card, but officially it is cramps. That's good to see. Jordan Brooks taken off a moment ago. Second and nine at the 26. Wilson throws. Catch is made. Gerald Everett fighting for a first down. Look at that yardage after contact. Look at him fighting through these tackles. Big and physical. They got to keep getting him involved. There's nothing wrong. And everybody's looking outside at your big stud superstars to get into your backs and tight ends, letting them work. Wilson, first down, lock it. Ball is out. The ball is loose. It's a catch rule, and it's recovered by Daniil Hunter. Bashad Breeland stripped it. Hunter covered it. And the Vikings get the turnover. If he gets down all the way, move down. Rule they catch him fumble on the field, but look at that knee right there. Going on the field is a catch by a fumble recovered by Minnesota. Seattle may get a break here. They're gonna look at it. We'll talk about it when we return. Scary moment after the Tyler Lockett play. He stayed down on the turf but was able to get up and walk to the sidelines where the athletic training staff is tending to him. Dean Blandino is with us in Los Angeles. Dean, good to see Tyler Lockett up. What do you see about the play? Rule the catch fumble on the field. Yeah, great to see Tyler lock it up. Two things they're looking for. Is it a catch? And then if it is a catch, is it a fumble? I do believe it's a catch. You're going to have control. 
both feet and then a turn and a third step and then you're going to see the right knee hit Lockett's right knee is going to hit before the ball comes out so this to me looks like a catch and down by contact and Seattle will maintain possession after so reviews much. the runner was down by contact before the ball came loose it'll be second Exactly as Dean Blandino said, Mark, and the better part of that play was watching Tyler Lockett get up and walk under his own power to the sidelines. That looked ugly, and he was down for a good long time while you were in commercial, but to see him get up and walk over to the sidelines, a great scene for Seattle fans. Well, I mean, they were holding their breath for sure. Dapper Dean Blandino nailed that call like always, but Tyler Lockett, when he was down, that entire bench cleared for Seattle. You want to tell... You know, it's it's. Uh, you want to know what this guy means to this team? The entire bench, all the coaches, all the staff were out there, within a couple feet, just checking on their guy. That's how much he means to this team. Second down and four from the 46-yard line. Vikings rush five as they set up the screen to Carson. Carson to the edge. Good play by Kendrick. Stopped short of the original line of scrimmage. As we watched the scene. This was a moment ago with Lockett on the field. Everybody surrounding Tyler Lockett. Laura Oakman was down on the field watching all that. What a show of respect, Laura, for a guy they all love on that Seattle sideline. That double mug look. Gonna have to figure out protection inside. And bring five. Wilson throws. Oh my! Almost a spectacular one-handed catch by Freddie Swain. Just couldn't pull it in with a left hand, and it's fourth down. And watch this ball just a little bit too high. Russ couldn't totally finish the throw, and you'll see why. When we get this sky cam look, all this traffic in his face, he was staring down the barrel, getting ready to get hit right there by big Sheldon Richardson, former rookie with us at the Jets, by the way. Good to see him landing in a great spot. But Russ had to, had to fall out of that throw and couldn't quite finish it. That's why you see it sail just a little bit out of the reach of Freddie Swain. Westbrook didn't call for the fair catch, makes the catch at the 12. Kenny Hart right there to make the stop for the Vikings with a ball in the lead when we return. Next Sunday on Fox, Sam Darnold leads the undefeated Panthers against Dak and the Cowboys, or Russell Wilson leads the Seahawks in an NFC West showdown against the 49ers. Check local listings for the game in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And a classic look by Mike Zimmer mugging up your A gaps, and what ends up happening is Sheldon Richardson comes, Vigil fakes like he's going to leave, and then comes. There goes uh, Eric Kendricks, and there goes another dropping D lineman. They don't know who's coming in front. They don't know what to do in those interior three linemen with the halfback. They end up blocking the same guy and leaving Sheldon Richardson free. Classic miscommunication up front against a tough defense. We're starting field position of the afternoon for Minnesota. Madison trying to turn that around. Good run. Excellent moves. Dancing down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. 24-yard scamper. Alexander Madison and he's just channeling his inner Dalvin Cook Dalvin Cook's got to be smiling about this because this is his move bounce in that C gap and then hit the edge and once you get out on the edge make somebody miss and go for a big chunk play down the field an explosive run by the Minnesota Vikings who are just taking over this game and forcing the Seattle Seahawks to submit right here he had 100 plus yards on the ground against Seattle last year. He's up to 88 today. Here's Abdullah up the middle, spins out of one tackle, and Amir Abdullah with nine to the 44. Cody Barton had a shot at him, but the running back's a little slippery right now. And Abdullah may see a little bit more time right now because Alexander Madison limping to the sidelines after that last play. Walking a little ginger on that right side. Look at him getting the. The hyper bolt on him. <laughs> Get that thing warmed up, ready for prime time. <laughs> a slow motion hyper bolt. Is I love a, it. It's a good look. <laughs> so 
be a doula's game for the moment at running back. Alexander Madison having a fantastic day so far. Cousins floats it over the middle. There's the tight end Conklin hand fighting down the sidelines and Conklin out at the 42. You talked about it earlier Mark the touch the quarterback puts on the football to his big tight end. Oh absolutely and it was Jamal Adams in coverage right here. He's got a man to man running across the field. It's one thing to cover a guy over a short distance, but when you got to cover him from sideline to sideline, it makes it really difficult. And now he's just trying to play catch up. But an excellent job by Kirk Cousins understanding, like we talked about. Hey, man, this is my big tight end. He's not Justin Jefferson. He's not Adam Thielen. Let me just give him a little change up on this ball, give him a chance to catch and run. At the 42, Abdullah. It's two to the 40. Rasheem Green, the first to contact him at the 40 yard line. Her cousins closing in on 300 yards passing. The Vikings have run the football for 111 yards, nearly 400 yards of total offense against the Seahawks defense today. And it's such a Kirk Cousins performance, right? He's steady, he's so consistent, he's not flashy. But before you know it, before you blink, you're down 20 unanswered points. Madison back in for Minnesota. Madison gets the carry. Driving forward to the 37-yard line. Puna Ford on the tackle. Minnesota has third down and medium coming up here. third down of the drive as Abdullah's back in in the backfield. We're still waiting for Abdullah to come up big. Or don't sleep on Kirk Cousins' ability to run and scamper for a first down if everything blows out of there. Seahawks bring in some heat. Cousins in some trouble. Floats it over the middle. It's Osborne! K.J. Osborne with the catch and a first down. 15 yards to Osborne. And they're bringing the house up front. Kirk Cousins sees it. All they're going to do is leave a one lone safety. He's got to hit this thing on the back pedal. This is so hard. And they take this for granted here in Trying to tackle you right in your face. I mean, this is textbook quarterback play when you're hot. And Kirk Cousins uses his strong core and torques that ball out in front of K.J. Osborne. Gives him a chance to run. 19th career 300-yard game for Kirk Cousins. Here's Madison trying to keep the clock churning as he gets inside the 20 down near the 18. We slide under seven and a half to play in what has been a dominant second half for the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, we're just not seeing enough from the Vikings, but, or excuse me, from the Seahawks, but credit to the Vikings for taking that momentum. And it honestly seemed like after that uh, penalty, right, on the defense that kept one third down alive third way five. back in the second quarter, Remember, it was Zamadi, right, on the hold. And ever since then, everything's gone in the Vikings' favor, and Kirk Cousins just riding that way. Must play Madison, big hole. Madison into the secondary, banging off contact. Madison down to the five-yard line, first and goal. 13-yard rumble for Alexander Madison. And look at him lead up on number 57 right here, the backer, opening the hole. Bam, just turning him outside. This guy, I mean, he went to school in South Dakota, but you know he hails from the shores of Lake Superior. 137 miles from where we're at. Duluth, Minnesota, baby. He's a hometown kid, right back in his home, just opening up holes for these halfbacks. They love this guy, big C.J. Hamm. First and goal at the five. That's Thielen in motion. The give to Madison. Madison up the middle, can't find the goal line, stacked up at the three. Second and goal. Ryan Monet on the stop. Kurt Cousins, not exactly bad in the first quarter. Five of six, 62 yards at a score, and he's kept it up. 23 of 30 cents for 248 yards. Kurt Cousins, 310 yards and three touchdowns today. And this is such a tough thing to do against a stingy and active and athletic physical front from Seattle. He's just kept them on, on task and on schedule. Remember he said that in our meeting, we gotta stay on schedule. 
And we got a chance. Ham, the lone setback. Ham will get the carry. Tries to cut it upfield, but boy, that penetration from Al Woods threw off the entire play for Ham. It sure did. Al Woods has the ability to be a game wrecker right in the middle here. And watch him get just sneak behind Bradbury and get a piece of Ham just to slow him down enough and muddy up his read, or else Ham might be in the end zone. And you know what that means. I'm doing backflips and cartwheels up here for that game. <laughs> Third down and three. Third and goal just inside that three yard line. Cousins, quick toss, Thielen. And Thielen not going to get in. Well defended by Trey Flowers. That's not easy, but he saw that in the film and jumped all over. Not easy, but you see his eyes watching inside. He knows exactly where this ball's going as soon as Thielen turns around. He's there to close the gap, close the distance, and save a touchdown. These fans are getting upset. They wanted him to go. Hey, look at the last guy jogging off is Kirk Cousins. I think he wanted to go for it, Kevin. He stayed out there as long as he could, hoping the coach would give him a chance. But they said, hey, we'll like to go up. Let's go up 13 points. Just extend our lead and take the smart three points here. Timeout. Seattle. Seattle has used a timeout. Their first timeout. Kirk Cousins has had himself a day. Really, he's had himself a terrific start to this 2021 season. Not one, not two, but three touchdown passes today for Kirk Cousins. That's eight on the year against no interceptions. And he's had pressure in his face. He's been able to find open receivers. He has really performed today like he has in the first two games. I know they didn't turn into wins for Minnesota, Mark. But Kirk Cousins' performance has been really, really high level for the first three games of the season. And that highlight montage shows me everything I need to see from a quarterback. That tells me he's got every club in the bag. And what do I mean? Every shot, all of them were different angles, different situations where he had to muscle the ball in and throw a laser, where he had to loft the ball, where he had to fade away and just give a little extra touch versus an all-out blitz. I mean, he's shown everything in this game. Credit to Kirk Cousins for playing his tail off. 20-yard field goal try for Joseph to try to go up 13. And the kick by Joseph is good. 30-17, to 17, Minnesota, 4-31 to play. Mick Tinglehoff played center for the Vikings from 1962 to 1978. He passed away on September 11th this year. Steve Riley, just five days later, the longtime left tackle for the Vikings, he passed away on September 16th, 2021. Two fantastic Minnesota Vikings. Tinglehoff, who entered into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the class of 2015, certainly missed by Vikings fans everywhere. Minnesota with a 30 to 17 lead with four and a half to play and a knee taken by DJ Dallas for the touchback for Seattle. This game so important for both of these teams. Minnesota just trying to get the win column in the NFC North. Packers at one and one. Bears losing earlier today so the Vikings and Bears will be knotted up. And the NFC West if you're Seattle right now you got to worry about falling behind too far in what is football's toughest division. And that makes last week's you know, mishap, an absolute disaster if you drop another one on the road here. Their schedule's not getting much easier, Kevin. They got their work cut out for them. But listen, a game like this, down 13, I don't want anybody else other than number three as my quarterback in this situation. He's never lost to Minnesota. 7-0 and in his career. Four-man rush on first down. Wilson throws. Metcalf's had himself a day. And he picks up yardage to the 44. A 19-yard pickup for Metcalf. His sixth catch of the afternoon. And a dicey decision by the defense to go with cover two man. Especially with Russell Wilson, a running quarterback, a guy who can move. That's dangerous. The 44 on first down. There's that movement from Russell Wilson. And he's going to have to throw this one toward the sideline. Lock it back out there. Great to see that. And now a flag comes in. A late hit on Russell Wilson from Everson Griffin. Personal foul roughing the passes. Number 97. Defense. First down. I 
mean, I'm all for protecting the quarterback. I get it. Was it that last? It may have been that last one. The last nudge. part? Because I think it was. The line was already on the way out, it looked like. Wow. That, I, I don't know. I got questions about that one. <laughs> 41 yard line is where this is placed after the penalty. It's first down for Seattle. Watch him in the slot. There's nobody over him. That means somebody's got to run. That's that's Metcalf in the slot right there. Somebody's got to run with him. Wilson under pressure and he's sacked. Eric Kendricks, his first sack of the year. I see where Kendricks comes from. He gets just inside of Dwayne Brown right here. Dwayne Brown. I don't know why he's setting so wide right there. He knows he's got help outside. You see him frustrated after that, looking at the other offensive line. That means he probably didn't get the right call. Those are Vikings fans screaming their head off right now. Makes it so hard to communicate inside. And that information has to go from inside out, from the center all the way out to the tackle, or else they're on the wrong page. Wilson has to step up and run. Chased down from behind. Griffin was there. Kendricks as well. The ball comes out. The clock continues to wind. Kendricks has the football at the end of the play, but I believe they're ruling it down. Quarterback is down by contact. There's no fumble. Knees down. Ball still in there. Knee down. You can just feel this momentum without that silly penalty. They have them on the ropes here. Third down and 12 at the 43, 245 to play. Wilson, pressure again from Griffin. And Wilson has to uncork one down the sideline for Metcalf, and the ball batted away. Looked like DK Metcalf jumped a little early for that one with Xavier Woods in coverage. He came down a little awkward too. Oh, there he is jumping up. Yeah, he jumped. He just missed time to jump. Just a little bit. Woods almost came away with one. And there's that patented spin move by Russell Wilson to his left. But the defenders in hot pursuit. You were talking with him about that. That's really rare, isn't it, for a right-handed quarterback to be as adept as he is at spinning and throwing when he goes left. He loves that spin out to the left. But I wish, I honestly wish that last play they could have gone with some sort of quick completion, a wide receiver screen, anything, quick game underneath, just to get you to a manageable fourth down because you got to treat, you know, this down, or excuse me, the down before. You're in four-down territory no matter what for the rest of the game. Just make it a little easier instead of having to go fourth and 12. And you're going for it on fourth down for the first time this year without DK Metcalf who headed to the sidelines. From the 43 on fourth down, pocket collapsing. Wilson airing it deep. Got a man open in the end zone and it's knocked away. Intended for Penny Hart. Ended up in the lap of Harrison Smith. The officials conferring in the end zone. Did he pick it? Either way, it's going to be Minnesota ball. That's deflected around, bounced off his face mask, and ended up in the lap of Harrison Smith. Let's see if we get the right angle here. Okay, ball still hasn't touched the ground. So if Hart's face mask goes out of our frame, hard to tell with that. Ball looked like it was in the right corner of the shot, just moving ever so slightly. And this ball, Russell Wilson known for that moon ball. This ball, that ball almost touched the ceiling of the building here, Kev. I think it was just way too high. He threw it so early, and he was giving his receiver a chance to get under it, but it also gave the defense a chance. Just a little too high on the trajectory there from Russell Wilson. I mean, he's building this thing almost like a punt. Ruled incomplete. Either way, it was going to be Minnesota football. Seattle with two timeouts and the two-minute warning down 13 as the Vikings offense takes the field. And this is their chance. A couple first downs here. And they'll put it away. Exhaust the timeouts from Seattle. 
but they're going to need some serious work up front. And from our guy, number 30, C.J. Ham, he's got to go to work now. Madison takes it from the 43 to the just shy of the 45. Taylor on the tackle. Clock will run down to the two-minute warning. Or will oh. Did he just burn one? He did. I think Creed just burned one. About seven seconds ran off the clock before the timeout, timeout. was utilized. Seattle, their second 30-second timeout. Well, it's been a while since Minnesota has tasted victory against the Seattle Seahawks. In fact, the last time was November 22nd, 2009. Vikings quarterback Brett Favre, 22 of 25, four touchdown passes on the way to a 35 to 9 Minnesota win. Favre was outstanding that day for the Vikings, but that's the last time they have tasted victory over Seattle and the last time Pete Carroll lost to Minnesota he was the head coach of New England it was November 2nd 1997 the old Metrodome a 23 18 win for Minnesota to beat Pete Carroll Drew Bledsoe in the loss for Pete Carroll that day had 313 yards but he came up empty and the timeout Seattle, used by Seattle brings up third down looks like they took a little long to call that first time out Especially after a good stand on a running play on first down of this drive, but oh, just a little late with the ball, just a little too high on the trajectory. Once again for Russell Wilson, but great job giving his guys a chance at least. You know, you'd like to see him if he could slam on the brakes and get up and try and catch that thing at the highest point before the defenders become an issue. But uh, Harrison Smith was, was hot on his tail. No more timeouts, but Seattle knew with the, with the two-minute warning it was going to run down to two minutes regardless of those timeouts used. So they'll watch this one after assuming not an incomplete pass. It'll run down to the two-minute warning. Third down and nine. Cousins to the air. To the sideline, it's Jefferson. A first down for Minnesota. And the Vikings are going to be able to salt this one away. Look at all the space once again. You're going to give him that kind of room and be worried about his speed. You're going to keep backing up. And look at Justin Jefferson break off this round. I mean, he's playing like a six, seven, eight year veteran out here with that one drop. And look how he's rallied. I mean, he hasn't even faced him. He didn't blink. He didn't flinch. Excellent job of being a steady guy for this team, a reliable target for Kirk Cousins. One more snap before the two minute warning. Cam in motion. Madison with the carry, yanked down from behind. A loss on the play back to the 47. And the two minute warning has arrived in Minnesota. Vikings closing in on win number one. Well, Patrick Peterson, very happy to have the fans back in Minnesota. His first taste of Vikings fans in this building after 10 years in Arizona. And a lot to cheer about today for the Vikings. 300-yard passing day, 100-yard rushing day, and a 30-17 to 17 lead with a minute 59 to go. On second down, here's Madison. Slipped as he made his cut and rolls to the 44. For an update, back to Los Angeles and Kurt Madison. All right, Dolphins blew a 14-0 lead, found themselves down eight to the Vegas Raiders. Closing seconds, Jacoby Brissett scores. Obviously, they have to go for two, and they get it. So we go to overtime, tied at 25. Kevin, this is the second OT game the Raiders have played in the first three weeks. The Raiders are the overtime team, Kurt. Apparently, just speaking of extra games and extra action bonus coverage coming up when we're done here at Tampa and the Rams we'll get you to there as soon as we are done in Minnesota third and 11 Amir Abdullah he's gonna keep it on the ground down to the 41 yard line Seattle's gonna get the football back but down 13 with very little time and no timeouts I mean they're gonna need an absolute miracle chunk play down the field for a big score and then Get an onside kick. It's a highly unlikely. Never say never with Russell Wilson, but let's talk about the Vikings for a second. 
and that practice we saw on Friday and our takeaways Kevin were this is an 0-2 ball club easy for them to come into that practice have their tail between their legs a somber atmosphere no doubt and cook a sour mood potentially losing your stud running back and credit to Kirk Cousins and his head coach Mike Zimmer for really bowing up you know standing up in the face of adversity convincing these guys that hey we got the process right we haven't got the result we wanted but we got the process down fellas we're talking two plays Five yard penalty. Four down. and they stress their focus on that process it's a pretty happy quarterback on the sidelines right now <laughs> with his performance today. 323 yards, three scores. Of course, because they're reminding guys, hey, we got the formula. The thing that's missing, we're missing four points in two plays in the last two weeks. Hang tight now. This thing's a marathon, not a sprint. I need your effort. I need good attitude this entire way. And they sure showed it today when they had a chance to fold up like a cheap suit and walk out of this thing and let Seattle walk all over. And what a finish for the special teams unit of Minnesota. Jordan Berry banks one out of bounds at the one yard line. Talk about placement. Somewhere Pat McAfee is smiling. <laughs> what a move that goes right out gonna... of there. He signed with the Vikings in September after six years with the Steelers and the native of Melbourne, Australia with a highlight to close this one for Minnesota. From the one yard line, all Seattle needs to do is go 99 yards in 23 seconds with no timeouts, get an onside kick, score again. Yeah, it's, it's a tall order. That's a lot to do. Russell Wilson. Vikings rush three. Wilson to the sideline. Catch made by Gerald Everett. 19 seconds to go and a little breathing room for Seattle here. Seahawks about to drop to one and two and it doesn't get any easier. San Francisco on the road, a home date on a Thursday night with the Rams and then a trip across the country to Pittsburgh for Sunday night football. Not an easy road ahead for Seattle. And that's a new look Rams team in their division with a stud quarterback in Matt Stafford who's, oh by the way, up big. <laughs> Tampa Bay right now well, the every, defending champs everybody in the division is undefeated in the NFC West right now as of this moment except for Seattle about to drop to one and two 13 seconds to go and to the sideline wide of the intended target DK Metcalf Nine seconds left before Vikings fans can really celebrate. Back in the building for the first time since 2019, and most of them will tell you it was worth the wait to see this Vikings performance today. And a couple of miss, missed opportunities for Seattle. You know, the missed field goal, the penalty, the silly penalty by Amadi that kept that drive alive, ended up having Thielen score. I mean, just adding insult to injury here late in the game. They just couldn't get anything going after scoring 17. And that is how this game comes to a close. A performance today.